Flamingo Land Resort is a theme park and zoo located just outside of York, England. It opened its doors in 1959, originally as just a zoo. It wasn't until 1974 when attendance was falling that they started adding rides. That's when we also saw the branding change. Originally, they were known as Flamingo Park Zoo. So they've obviously changed quite a bit since then. They're now home to 10 roller coasters, own 375 acres of land. There's 120 species of animals here. The zoo is open year-round. The rides operate from March through November, and they even got on-site accommodation with different lodges. So there's definitely more to this place than originally meets the eye. I didn't make my first visit to Flamingo Land until summer 2023. I was familiar enough with Flamingo Land, but there's still quite a bit for me to discover in walking around the park for my first time. And there were some things that I was pleasantly surprised about, but overall, the park left me largely unsatisfied. Not because I had any inherently negative experiences, but just in that as I'm walking around, there are things that I'm picking up on and noticing that should be better, primarily in the park appearance category. This is not a theme park. This is an amusement park. They do technically have themed zones, but to call them themed, I think is a bit of a stretch. We have like Riverside One, Metropolis, Dino Stone Park, Muddy Duck Farm, Lost Kingdom Reserve, Children's Planet, Regions that often don't even have signs to let you know that you've entered a new realm. There rarely is any difference thematically. Flamingo Land feels like two separate parks. You have the amusement area, and then you have the zoo. The zoo is nice. You can tell that this came first because it clearly has been given the most attention. It's very large and spread out, often going through the woods. There's elevated pathways allowing you to look down into different exhibits. There was even a monorail that took you above some of the exhibits, giving you some great aerial views. I actually really like the zoo portion. My complaints really come with the amusement section. And I think we have a couple problems. Number one, as I briefly mentioned earlier, the park appearance. There's not a lot of heart here. It is very soulless. It feels like a bunch of rides just plop down with not a lot of thought put into it. Everything is very plain. There's very little landscaping. It's like they did the bare minimum. Many of these rides look temporary. Some of them look like they shouldn't be here at all. It's like a step above a carnival. If I could do anything to Flamingo Land before adding any new rides, I would put a focus on beautifying the amusement sections of Flamingo Land. Some landscaping would go a long way, and I know they're capable of it because, again, the zoo looks great. Number two main problem, quantity over quality. We have 10 roller coasters, but how many of them are actually good? Let's walk through these. When you first approach Flamingo Land, the first ride that you're going to see is actually their newest one, Sick. It's an Intamin 10 inverting coaster. There's already a full separate review of this attraction specifically already up on the channel. Please go watch that if you want more details about this ride. It's a very interesting experience. To me, it doesn't feel like the headliner attraction. It feels like a supporting coaster, but that headlining attraction doesn't exist yet. They don't have a roller coaster that is like the ride. The next biggest coaster is Kumali. It's a custom Vekoma SLC that opened back in 2006. It's fine. It didn't kill my head like many other Vekoma SLCs that I've done. So I didn't hate it. This is actually one of the few rides that has some sort of attempt at a theme with that rockwork entrance. Same with the ride that's located directly next door, Mumbo Jumbo. This is a plug and play SNS El Loco. Awesome visual. It's got that clickbait look to it. The problem is that those over-the-shoulder harnesses just kill the ride. The models that feature lap bars only are vastly superior. Velocity is a custom Vekoma motorbike coaster. This one was fun. It's very similar to Booster Bike at Toverland if you've experienced that ride. No theming here, but they do play classic rock in the station, which I actually thought was pretty fun. And then we have Hero, an abomination of a roller coaster from Zamperla. This is one of their Volares, so you ride it in a flying position, and it is horrible. If you want to actually improve the park, take this thing out. It's terrible, and somehow this is one of the newer attractions. It opened in 2013. Not sure what they were thinking there, other than it was probably cheap. Those are your main thrill coasters. The rest are going to be smaller family attractions. They range in size from Go Gator, which you can't ride unless you're a kid, to Dino Roller, a little bit bigger. Zoom is a Zamperla suspended family coaster. Cute little ride. Runaway Mine Train, a Zamperla kitty coaster. And then finally, Twistosaurus, yet another coaster from Zamperla. This one a spinner, and actually you can get this thing really going. It was better than I expected. So 10 coasters, but nothing here that is really outstanding. Many of them are clones, plug-and-play models, which, okay, if you're a park that is on a budget, which clearly Flamingo Land does not 
not have the most money to afford a big custom modern state-of-the-art ride, then I understand buying a plug-and-play, especially if there's not another one in the region, then it just makes sense. But there's off-the-shelf models they could have gone with that would actually be good. Something like a Skyrocket 2 would actually be a really good fit here. They only have one launch coaster and this would give them an LSM swing launch. So they'd also have a ride that would go backwards. And believe it or not, there is somehow not a Skyrocket 2 in the UK. So I feel like that would just make sense. An RMC Raptor would also be a bit more affordable and that'd be an awesome fit here. They don't have an airtime centric roller coaster. Like if budget wasn't an issue, I'd say a traditional hyper or mega coaster from like Intamin would just be amazing. That'd give them that signature ride. But I just don't see that happening. They've clearly bought some rides from SNS before. Even a free spin would be a nice fit here. You could put it where Hero is. Get rid of that thing, please. In terms of other rides, most of them are going to be smaller, like crappy carnival rides. Many of them not even on a permanent foundation. They look like they just need a good cleaning. Like they are plopped down without any care, and it's just kind of sad. But they do have an SNS shot tower. There's a really weird dark ride that's basically a kidsified version of like the classic horror monsters like Dracula and Frankenstein. They're all in a house being really goofy. There were a lot of fart jokes. It was really strange. I think it's meant for kids because the vehicles were really tiny. I don't know. It was one of the weirdest dark rides I've ever done. In a perfect world, I'd love to see a more modern dark ride here as well as something maybe like a scream and swing. But I don't know how likely any of this is. I guess it just depends on how much the owners want to invest in it. I'd be curious to know what kind of return they get when they add a new attraction. Because it seems like they add new attractions often enough, but it's not a steady stream of investment like what we get at places like Thorpe Park or Alton Towers. Which in the UK, there's a lot of competition. If I were a local, which obviously I'm not, I think I'd find myself repeating those other parks over Flamingo Land. At least for me, I don't have a ton of desire to go back. At least until they add something new that is, like, substantial. Like, the addition of Sick was a great incentive for me to visit. But the first time I visited the UK, when we had to, like, pick and choose which parks to visit, Flamingo Land didn't make the cut. If you're not, like, a theme park enthusiast and you have to, like, pick and choose which property you're going to visit with your family, where you're going to spend all your money, I can see why more people choose Blackpool Pleasure Beach or Alton Towers. I think the park is fine for the market that it's in. Oh, it does baffle me just how far out there it is. The closest big city is York, and that's like just under 40 minutes away. That's a decent drive, or if you take a bus, which is what we did, it was over an hour ride. We took the 840 Coastliner, drops you off right near the main parking lot. It was actually really convenient. But I think to wrap things up, Flamingo Land is fine, but I'd love to see a change for the better. Give the theme park the same love that you're giving to the zoo, and I promise that people will notice and appreciate it. Oh yeah, and one last thing. For a park that's called Flamingo Land, there is a shockingly small amount of flamingos here. I thought I was going to see flamingos right when I walked in. Do better, guys. Lean into your branding. But I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments below. What do you think of Flamingo Land in England? Do you agree with the points that I brought up? Do you think there's anything I missed? And of course, stay tuned for more park reviews here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.